What's up everyone? Welcome to part two of our series on convolution. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the Fourier transform. So if you haven't watched my first video on Fourier series, I'd recommend you go and watch that one first. So to get started, what I did to help with this video is prepared a Jupyter notebook. So I'll add a link in the description where you can access that. Basically, it'll take you to my GitHub and you'll click on this Fourier transform.ipynb. And when you do that, GitHub will actually present all the data. So it'll render out the LaTeX. It will display the code. It will even plot all the plots. So it's a great way to follow along if you don't have Jupyter Notebooks. And if you do have Jupyter Notebooks, you can just come and download the file itself just by click the download zip file and follow along and modify the file however you choose. So let's get started. I'm going to jump over to the notebook and where we left off was we showed the Fourier series which was some periodic function f of x could be written as a series of cosines and sine waves. So now what I want to do <clears throat> is look at a particular case of the square wave. So I want to take the square wave, center it at x equals 0. I also want to make it go from 0 to 1. And what I did was that right there. So this is the equation for it. And if you recall, the square wave only had um, odd terms. There were no even terms. So only 1, 5, 1, 3, 5, etc. So also now we have cosine because now we're centered at x equals 0. Cool. So that's, that's going to be our starting point. And in the last video, I never really explained how to calculate the a sub n and b sub n coefficients. I just presented what they were and, yeah, left that bit out. So what I want to do is show how we calculate those. So the first change I want to do is introduce a new variable called the frequency. So the frequency, we call it omega naught, and it's just 2 pi divided by the period. So for this wave, the period is 2 pi. So you can see after 2 pi, the wave repeats. So when we plug that in, we're basically just putting that omega naught right in here in the cosine and sine term. So if we want to calculate a sub n, the equation is this integral right here. It's 2 divided by t, which is the period. And then we integrate over one period. And the integral is f of x times cosine and omega naught x dx. So this integral actually isn't too bad. Because if we go back to our function f of x, we can see that over those integration limits, the function is 0 for a chunk of it. So we can shorten our limits to just from here to here. And over that interval, the function is just 1. So we can replace f of x with 1. So our integral becomes something a lot more simple. It's this right here. So we've um, shortened the limits of integration, and we've replaced f of x with 1. And one more simplification we can do is because cosine is an even function, what that means is it's symmetric about x equals 0. So since it's symmetric, the integral on the negative side is the same as the integral on the positive side. So what we can do is just do the integral from 0 to right here and just multiply the whole thing by 2. So that's what I do here. I multiply by 2, and our limits are 0 to um, t over 4. And this is actually a pretty simple integral. It's just um, the integral of cosine is sine, and we have to divide by the terms inside. So we divide by that n omega naught, and we evaluate the integral from 0 to t over 4. So what that looks like is here. Our answer is just 2 over n pi times sine n omega naught pi over 2. So if I were to plot this here, this is what I would get. So the blue dots are when n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. 
and the dash blue line is if I were to consider n as a continuous variable. So I just let n be any value from 0 <coughs> to 8. So you can see that our points are spaced by omega naught. And what you can also see is that all the even terms are 0. So that's why the square wave doesn't have any even coefficients, because they're all 0. So kind of cool. So now what happens if I were to take our square wave and just push those square pulses farther and farther apart? So what I mean by that is we keep this square pulse the same, but we just separate the distance between them by a little bit more. So in this case, I doubled the distance between them by doubling the period to 4 pi. So now let's calculate a sub n for this, this square wave, or sometimes called a pulse wave. So our fundamental frequency is going to be omega naught prime, and that's just half, half of what our previous omega naught was. So when we calculate a sub n, we get the same answer, except we have omega naught prime instead of omega naught. And what that means is basically, since this is half of what the previous one is, the spacing between our dots is going to be half. So we're going to have more dots. We're going to have a dot in between each dot compared to the previous, um, between the previous Fourier series. So, so yeah, we're, we're just have more and more points along the same curve, but it's the, it, it is the exact same curve as the previous one. So like you can see here, we had, you know, these dots were spaced out every omega naught. Now they're spaced out every half an omega naught. So what happens if we keep going and pushing these things farther and farther apart? For example, what if we make the period 10 times bigger? So our frequency spacing is going to be one tenth of the previous one. So what that looks like is we're going to have 10 dots in between 0 and omega naught. So as, as the period gets bigger and we push these squares farther and farther apart, we're filling in more and more points along this curve. So at the limit where we push these things really far out, basically making t go to infinity, that, that means that our spacing between points is going to go to zero. And this discrete points along this curve is just going to become that curve. It's just going to be a continuous, um, a continuum of frequencies. So that's what, that's what the Fourier transform is. It's going from <clears throat> discrete values that are <clears throat> equally spaced to a continuous frequency spectrum. So I think that's all I'm going to do for this video. I'll probably come back with another video to talk a little bit more about the Fourier transform because really there's just so much to talk about. It's hard to cover all aspects of it in a short amount of time. So if you have any questions or suggestions for the next video, please leave a comment. If you like the video, leave a like. And if you want to come back for more, then hit that subscribe button. See you guys.